Feskerma agas falcha. Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome to this video lesson. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to take a look at question words, specifically four question words that are a bit more complicated than the ones we saw in part one of this two-part lesson. Yeah, we're taking a look at some incredibly useful questions that are a bit trickier. So we're going to learn how they work, we're going to see how to respond to them as well, because it's so important to not only understand what's being asked of you, but also to be able to continue the conversation. Aye, question words, as I said in part one, question words are so, so important to conversation. Aye, so that's what we're going to look at here. Four ones, four question words that are a bit trickier, but they're actually not too, too bad. Okay, let's jump in. <clears> hmm, <throat> let's sort out what we have here. Let's make sure we understand what they're asking first. Kaviat means... How many? <clears throat> how many? Technically, it's asking what amount. What amount? However, it's used just like how many is in English. Yeah, so kaviat means how many. Ko ik means who has. <clears throat> who has. If this is a bit surprising or a bit confusing already, don't worry, we're going to look into it when we come to it. Yeah. All right, J ed. J ed. Remember, <clears throat> this D E makes a J sound. J ed. Ed means on. So what on? <laughs> what on? And again, that seems a bit strange, but when we put it into, <clears throat> when we add more to the question, it'll become a lot clearer. And then down here, one that you probably know already, you've heard a bunch, koas means where from? <clears throat> Koas. Aye. Yeah, nice. One thing that I've noticed about question words in Gaelic is they give a lot of information. For example, if we said Koas ahau, Koas ahau, where are you from? In Gaelic, we're saying, where from are you? So we're already knowing what question is being asked right at the beginning. Whereas in English, we need to wait till the end of the question to understand what's actually being asked. Where are you from? It's not saying where is something, but where are you from? So in that way, I think the Gallic way is a lot more straightforward, <laughs> a lot easier. <clears throat> okay, Gleva, a little something to keep in mind as we work through these, if these seem really bizarre, really strange. It's actually giving you a lot of information right away. Okay, where shall we start? Um, well, koas. Koas is something that we, we learn pretty early on. So let's start with koas. Where from? Koas. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, we could say koas ahau. Koas ahau. Where are you from? But we can ask where something else is from too. So... Let's see here. Koas, what could we add? <clears throat> um, koas, uh, ha, koas, uh, ha, and coffee. Yeah. Maybe if you're a coffee enthusiast or a coffee aficionado, you're wondering where's the origin of the coffee? Where is it from? Koas ahan coffee. Koas ahan coffee. Just like that. Okay, nice. Koas ahan coffee. Where from is the coffee? Koas ahan coffee. Let's take a look at our structure, how this question's built. We start with a question word. Maybe I'll put this here. <laughs> Where from? Gleva. 
question word first, koas, aha, and coffee. That's how it works. Koas, aha, and then whatever you're asking about. Um, what's another example? Mm, the rooster. <laughs> the rooster's offering a lot of ideas, but I don't speak rooster. <laughs> um, koas, aha. Thank you, rooster. Koas, aha. Oh, wine. Maybe someone brought some wine to dinner or they talk about their wine collection. There might be a few wine drinkers in the Gallic community. Maybe. <laughs> Koas, aha. Amphian. Koas, aha. Amphian. Aye. Oh, we got to have some pictures. Yeah, and coffee. Got to have some pictures. Coffee do. I guess Amphian. Gleva. Bochtal, I guess, Fian Jedak, Gleva, mm. Bochtal, Bochtal Fiena, <laughs> show Bochtal Fiena, Koas, aha, am Fian. Where's the wine from? Koas, aha, and coffee. Where's the coffee from? And so on and so forth. Yeah. So that question, koa sahau, is preparing you to ask about a lot of different things. Yeah, really where they're from, their origin. Nice. And again, our structure is pretty straightforward. Question word first, koas, and then aha, is, and then the thing that you're asking about. Koa saha and coffee. And we can change the ha to va, where was the wine from? Koas of va amphian. Mm -hmm. Or where, where will the wine be, be from? Where will it be from? Maybe planning some sort of dinner and there's like a very specific wine that you want, you know, checking out where will the wine be from? Koas of vis amphian. Gleva. <laughs> so really, if, if you're familiar with the structure of how questions work, that we looked at in part one and using question words one, then you'll have these, you'll have these. They, you'll, we're just learning the little tricks to them. Yeah, leva. Okay, so how do we respond? It's important to be able to respond to these questions too. Koas aha amphian, koas aha and coffee. Um, let's see, let's go with the wine. Koas aha amphian. Saun, uh, where's the wine from? I like Spanish wine, I like Portuguese too. Um, I could do German wine, I mean, there's a lot of different wine out there. Californian wine too. Um, let's do, let's do Spanish wine. Yeah, Saun, as and Span. Saun, as and Span, a, ha, Nice. So this is the more traditional way to respond to it, using saun at the start. Saun, as, and span, a hi. It is from the Spain that it is. <laughs> kind of a long, a long answer there. We, what we could do is actually, if you ask koas, aha, amphian, we could say as, and span. Done. As, and span. That's like really informal, yeah. But it's a useful thing to know because a lot of learners respond in full questions and that's great, or excuse me, full sentences. That's great, you know, it's, it is really important to just really internalize, really learn and feel how Gallic is used, you know, how Gallic makes sentences and questions. But at the same time, a native speaker doesn't always speak in full sentences. A native speaker sometimes speaks in one or two words, and that's of any language, right? So if someone asks me, hey, where's the wine from? I could say, from Spain. That's just fine. Yeah, as a native speaker, that feels pretty comfortable. But I could also say, it is from Spain. So again, you can use a full sentence to respond, or you could just say, 
the main part of your answer, which is from Spain in this case. Something to keep in mind. Okay. Coas aha amphian. Saun as and span ahai. Okay. There's something really important about both of these that we need to look at. Coas aha amphian. So this has ha in it. It's asking about right now. Well, I'm asking right now, where's the wine from? Ha is in our answer. Saun as and span ahae. Yeah. So if this was va, koas a va amphian, the answer would need to have va in it too. Saun as and span a va e. So your question and your answer connect in that way. They they mirror each other. Yeah. Most of the time. I mean the vast majority of the time, almost every time. Yeah, there are some exceptions. Again, if you're just saying as and span, you're not saying ha. And you're okay. Yeah, which is why I say, you know, most of the time. But for our lesson here, it's important to see that the question and the answer, they share the same uh, is here, right? Ha, ha. If this was va, so would this, this too would be va. Okay, nice. Leva. And to be honest, this is our standard structure for the rest of them. There are some little um, tricks that we're going to learn, but if this makes sense to you, or if it's pretty much okay, skonyer, then you've got these, almost all of them. <laughs> okay. Or you've, you've got them, you've got almost all of these other three. That's a better way to put it. All right, so let's come up to here. J. Ed. J. Ed, what on? <laughs> that seems like a bit of an odd question. So let's make it a full question. What on? J. Ed, uh, ha, u, a quiet. Hmm. What on? Are you? watching. What on are you watching? <laughs> In Gaelic, when you watch something, when you put your attention on something more than just for a second, you know, if you put it on for, you know, some time, then you're putting your attention on it. You're watching on that thing. And in Gaelic, we use the word ed. Ed. Mm -hmm. A koyet takes the little word, the helper word, ed. Yeah, watching on. Ha mi a koyet ed. What, what can we do? Ha mi a koyet, what do people watch? <laughs> well, ha mi a koyet ed Fraser. Yeah, gleva. <laughs> ha mi a koyet ed Game of Thrones. Ha mi a koyet ed Lord of the Rings. Um, you, get, you already get a sense of what I tend to watch. <laughs> Anything like that, yeah. Mm hmm. So a koyet takes this little helper word ed, which is pretty important. And this is how you make a question with that little helper word. It comes right to the beginning. So let's take a look at the response, the answer. J ed a how a koyet. I want to make sure there's space up here. Let's maybe come up here. Ha mi a koyet. Ed, oh gosh, Doctor Who, why not? Doctor Who, or Doctor Ko, maybe, <laughs> in Gaelic. Ha mi a koyet ed. Watching on Doctor Who. And when we make the question, what on are you watching? The ed comes right here. So that's a trick to, or just kind of a, yeah, a trick, a trick to using these kinds of questions. When you have actions that have little words that they use, little helper words, like watching on, for example, then the little helper word comes to the beginning. J. Ed, 
a ha u a coet. Ha mi a coet er doctor who. Cleva. Or, as I mentioned with this one, you could just say doctor who. <laughs> That's fine. But it is, it is use, very useful to get used to how a full sentence works in Gaelic so that it, it's just so natural to you. So, so natural. Yeah. And once it's so natural and you feel like you're always speaking in full sentences and it's getting kind of, uh, then maybe shorten your sentences a little bit. <laughs> okay. J er a hau a koyat, ha mi a koyat er doctor who. So any of these little prepositions, they're called, little helper words like on, with, under, etc., in, that comes to the beginning. And it follows the same structure. Question word plus helper word, right? Aha. Uh, and then you and the action. Question word are or is or am you watching. Then our action at the end. Yep, pretty much the same structure as down here, just a little bit extra. Koa saha u, yeah. J er aha u, and then we add on a koyet. Nice. Okay, let's make some some space here. I like this arrow; it's, it's helpful. But we also need we also need some good space up here to look at ko ik. That's our next one. Ko ik. Who has? What the heck? <laughs> let's look at a full question and the answer. That'll make everything clear. That's my, that's my hope, at least. That's the plan. We'll see how it goes. Maybe it'll go according to plan. <laughs> ko ik. Ko ik a ha kacht, for example. Who has is cat? <laughs> that's just crazy. When we translate it like this, piece by piece, <laughs> is a cat, right? <laughs> Who has is a cat? <laughs> well, what's actually happening here with ik? Ik means at. Who at? Who at? That's what we're really asking. Ik means at. Who at is a cat? Who at is a cat? That's kind of fun. A bit of rhyme in there. <laughs> Remember in Gaelic, when you have something, it's at you. Hakacht akam. And by the way, the action I'm using for having, for this idea of having, is like I have something in my hands here. Akam. And then I point to who has it, right? Akam, akat, etc. Yeah. Ko ik ahakacht. Ko ik ahakacht. And the response, ha kacht akam. Nice. That's pretty straightforward. Ko, uh, ha kacht akam, or ha ku akam, ha kar akam, ha, <laughs> ha ben akam, ha te akam, you know, in the traditional song. <laughs> but having something, I have. Let's remember that akam is ik plus me. At me. So what we're actually saying, literally, is the words here are saying, a cat is at me. And in Gaelic, at me means I have. I have. So our question, just like we had with J. Ed, remember, watching on something, we have a helper word, ed, here, so it comes up to here at the beginning, to the question word. Same with this, except ik and akam, there's a big jump between them, but when we remember that akam is ik and me, we see ik comes here to the beginning, just like with j, ed. And that can be really complicated and difficult to remember in the moment if you're a if you're a grammar geek, you know, a linguistics geek, you know, this type of stuff may really thrill you, and that's great, by all means. However, when we are 
you know, speaking Gaelic to a fellow human being, simplicity, I feel, is the best way. <laughs> the most straightforward, doable way. So, my recommendation, after all that explanation of why it's ache for have, let's just remember that ko ache means who has. There we go. Who has a cat? Ko ache a ha kacht. Oh, ha kacht akam. Ha kacht akam. I have a cat. Ha ku akam. Ha fien jerak akam. Ha bochtal. Ha bochtal fiena akam. Ha kofi akam. Oh, koa sahan kofi. Well, you know, wherever it's from. <laughs> Saun a uh, Vietnam hai. Oh, gleva. <laughs> and in another video, video, we're going to take a look at how to talk about tastes. So maybe we'll talk about tastes of coffee in that one. Gleva. But coming back here to our question words here, our more complicated ones. Ko ik means who has. And the structure follows the same um, as really down here. Ko ik, so question word, aha, thing, done. And just like these two, if we have ha here, our answer is going to have ha in it. Yeah. So who had a cat in the past? Ko ik a va kacht, va kacht akam. Va kacht akam. Or ko ik a vis kacht. I mean, you could, but I mean, there are so many ways to talk about, you know, do you want a cat? Maybe that would be a bit more natural, you know, but you could respond, be kacht akam. I will have a cat. The main thing to remember here is that if your question has ha in it, then most of the time, almost every time, your response will have ha in it too. A little thing to double check. Okay, nice. And our final question up here, kaviat. How many? How many? All right, so let's see, what could we ask? How many? How many cats do you have? Well, we've established you have a cat. Ha kacht akam. Okay. Gleva. Kaviet kacht. A ha akat. How many cat? Um, let's do it literally. Is at you. Remember, akat means you have. Yep. And just like akam means I have, akat is really ik plus u at you at you. Yeah, just for for your information. <laughs> Kaviat kacht Aha akit. How many cat is at you? How many cat do you have? Same structure. Question word starts us off here. Mm -hmm. And then we have our thing. Oh, wait a minute. So it's not exactly the same. A little different. And then we have is. And then who has it? So it's... Looks like it's this, but backwards. The order is different. Yeah. And that's just for this example. Kaviet kacht a ha akat. And you could respond, ha kacht akam. I have a cat, meaning one. Yeah, I have one cat. Ha kacht akam. Some people use un for one. You could just say kacht. I have a, a cat. A cat. Ha kacht akam. You know, un. All right. Um, let's see. What other examples can we put up here? Uh, how many, how many what's? Ooh. Yeah. Maybe learning about a new place. Um, Kaviet. Um, Dunya. Aha. Ounce. Vala. Ooh, what are we talking about? How many 
person is in the town. Oh, how many people are in the town? Right, what's the population? That's the idea behind this question. Okay, nice. So, same structure as the previous question. How many, question word first, always, thing you're asking about, so how many, and then how many of what, is, and then where. Kaviat dinya aha ansavala. How many people are in town? In the town. You could say, oh, ha, ha moran, <laughs> ha moran ansavala. Yeah, let's do that. Ha moran, ha moran dinya ansavala. Um, I'm running out of space. I'm running out of space, so I'm going to smush ounce into just sa. There we go. That native speakers do that often. Yeah, I know of at least one native speaker who does not like that. <laughs> and I can understand that. Native speakers do do this very often, though. It's like any language, right? Native speakers smush words together, maybe, you know, drop a letter or two, you know, a sound in the word. Like don't in English instead of do not. Do not becomes don't. And it's a very native speaker um, thing to say. Don't. Don't. So it's the same here. Sa is actually ounce. I'm saving space on the board too. Hamorandinya savala. Many people. Maybe you remember that video lesson about many and a few. Hamorandinya savala. There are many people in the town. And then you could, you know, say exactly how many, like there are 2,000, there are five, you know, <laughs> however many. Okay, so this question, caveat has a little trick to it. It has a little quirk, you know, a little something to, to know. Do you see it? Looking at this, do you see something that seems a little weird or different? Hmm. When I look at this question word, this seems a bit weird. How many person? Not how many people. That would be the English translation, you know, the English idea, say the equivalent. But how many person is what we're saying in Gaelic. Okay. With how many cats do you have? Remember, this was just cat. How many cat do you have? <laughs> so in English, we'd say how many cats. Right? But in Gaelic, how many cat? So the trick to this is that the thing that you're saying how many there are of is singular. So it's just one of it. So how many person? How many house? How many year? How many day? How many hour? How many week? How many, how many lasagna? Oh, is lasagna plural already? I don't know. How many bottle? How many cup? How many cup of coffee did you have today? <laughs> so it seems kind of odd, but this is how it works. Yep. Singular. When you use caveat, the thing that you're saying how many, how, uh, you're, that's connected to this question, is singular. It's just one of it. Yep. Nice. So that's how these work. Kaviat has its little trick with using singulars. And then koik really means who has. And that can be kind of tricky to get used to, but it'll come with practice. It'll come. J ed, ed, we're seeing here is connected to this action koet, koet ed. So that's why we have ed up here. That's something to keep in mind. And then koas is something we're very familiar with. Koas, aha, and kofi. And then, Saun, uh, Vietnam, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, Kleva. So that's how these four question words work. They're a little more complicated, a little more tricky, but they're not impossible. Nothing in Gaelic is impossible, even if, even if it feels like it is. It just takes time, practice, and maybe, you know, a break or two <laughs> to avoid getting overstressed. Kleva. So, 
these are the question words here. Play around with them, you know, have, have fun, try them out, maybe pick one to try, or keep a lookout if you, as you read and you hear things. Maybe in a song you'll hear one of these, or in a story. Yeah, keep it out for them, and now you know what they mean. And one day you'll be able to use them very smoothly, very naturally. Okay, gleva, gleva. <laughs>